following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Very good evening and you are joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and this is a program where we talk about youth related topics or issues. Now today we are at the beach and have you ever wondered about the world underneath the ocean? Now there are ways of doing this, there are ways of discovering. You can probably uh, search up on the internet but you can also do it by yourself by going diving and as you all know Sri Lanka is an island and we have beautiful coasts here in Sri Lanka and there's a lot more to explore. Now today on the show I have a young young child actually he's 17 years old and he has been scuba diving for almost seven years now from the age of 10 and along with him we have his instructor as well and so we're going to talk to them and find out their experience uh, in scuba diving so with that Mihin and uh, Mr. Jahan Piris thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show and I'm really interested to find out um, what made you all join this unconventional offbeat career of yours? Like, sir, you have been in the field. You told me that you were interested in the ocean from when you were really young. And uh, Mihi knows from the age of 10. And uh, I think prior to the discussion we were talking about, from the age of 5, you were interested in water yes. and the ocean. So tell me how you got into this sport and uh, what do you like best about it? Well, First of all, it's quite, it's quite ironic because I used to be really scared of the water. So, um, back in the UK, my mom took me to the beach. And what she did was she held me about the water and I was like really scared. I was holding my legs up about the water. I didn't want to get in. But then after, you know, after a few minutes or so, I got uh, comfortable. You know, I started swimming. Um, you know, I started, you know, looking around, you know, picking up seaweed, all that type of stuff, looking at it, you know, I was like really interested. And then that passion, that small spark, it kind of like slowly grew into this like um, drive to like get into the water. So, you know, a few years later I used to, I came back to Sri Lanka and then I started snorkeling, you know, I went freshwater rivers uh, in here in the ocean and then I looked up on a website and I saw scuba diving. So I was like, I need to do that, I need to. But I wasn't old enough at the time, so unfortunately I had to wait for around another six years or so. Uh, but anyhow, um, once I turned 10, my mom surprised me. And uh, yeah, it kind of just like sort of happened and then yeah, I started scuba diving. Surprised you as in how? Uh, was really abrupt. She just like out of the blue. She was just like, "Okay, we're gonna take you scuba diving," and I was like overjoyed. Oh, yeah. So she actually encouraged you to do that as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what is your experience, sir? How have you been in this field? And you have so many interesting stories to share about. We've been having this discussion prior to the program also, but just tell me how you got into the ocean. How I got into the ocean was basically. I am part of a family that is very uh, liberal, in other words, open. We were encouraged to investigate a lot of things. And we are into wildlife a lot. And uh, one part is diving. So as a kid, I was more of a water baby. You know, I was more interested in being in water. I've been sort of all the time in water. Uh, I can remember the first time I learned a little bit about diving was watching Arthur C. Clarke and his crew when they were at uh, Otters and they trained there. And whilst they were training, I got sort of roped in. I was very interested and they sort of roped me in. I was around 11, 12 years old. 
And then from then on, you know, like I had this dream wanting to be a diver, just doing it, I was just doing it for fun. Then gradually, you know, slowly, gradually, I got dragged into it. I started helping out there and helping dive center. And then I was certified when I was 16, 17. And then since then it has been, you know, right throughout. Only thing is I worked in the corporate sector for about 20 years. I Meanwhile, I was just doing fun dives occasionally and uh, continued doing it. After the tsunami only I got interested. We were assisting the people on the coastal areas. And uh, I was, because I had some knowledge about diving and things like that, they got me to help them out and help the people out and, you know, go and purchase diving equipment and help the divers on the coastal area. Mm -hmm. And then gradually I got roped in and got into it. Around 2011, I worked as a dive master at a place called Colombo Divers. Now, I've been at Island Scuba since then. Great. So, from your experience that you all been having throughout your diving career what do you enjoy most about it and what do you you know treasure about diving because this is not a career that you can do this is completely you do it out of passion so yes. what do you enjoy about it well it's, it's not like I enjoy a specific thing really it's like multiple elements that come together which create something amazing you know there's Obviously, you feel weightless, you know, you're floating inside the water, you know, there's beautiful fish, you know, they're swimming around rainbow colored, you know, there's coral, they're stretching out, it's like, it's like a underwater forest. And um, also you have these, you know, artificial man-made structures, you know, shipwrecks, and also, you know, statues. We also have these conservation projects where we dump like statues into the water. And then we let the uh, nature take over and then create its, let its beauty take over basically. And then, yeah. Anyway. What about you, sir? What is the most important thing for you about uh, diving? For me, the most important thing about diving is the diversity of different, different uh, creatures that are living in, the, in our coastal seas. So I've seen from whale shark right up to whales, dolphins and things like that. And we have seen some unique species, especially in the Mount Lavinia region, which is rather surprising, but it's really fantastic fish that we have seen here. But right around Sri Lanka, the diving is very good. And frankly, in comparison to a lot of areas that I've dived in, Sri Lanka is a good opportunity for teaching. I love teaching. So I enjoy teaching students, and most of the time it's the young ones that I'm usually placed with. Uh, so I never realized that I was a teacher until I started doing this. So basically, you know, teaching is one thing, and just being underwater. I mean, being underwater is like a complete different world, and uh, it really builds up your confidence. It builds up your esteem. It will also encourage you to venture out and find out things for yourself, boost your curiosity, mm -hmm. your investigative skills. You want to find out more and more. And I find it very interesting when I handle students because I love working with students. So, Mihin, uh, how was your experience with uh, Mr. Jahan Pires and how do you think, how can you describe his coaching, how did you build up your relationship and Mr. Jahan, you can also talk about Mihin's experience in scuba also, scuba diving. I honestly think it was a fantastic experience because, uh, you know, he, uh, Jahan is very experienced, he knows everything there is to know about scuba diving. So, when I came here, I think all was in good hands. So, you know, he taught me everything. We went through um, ground training, we went, uh, we went through training in the sea, we went through training in the pool. And overall, I think it was a 10 out of 10 experience. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jahan, how would you think that Mean fared so far in diving? He was fairly, he was fairly good, actually. What I, would, I found out is that he was relaxed. 
and at home in water. And he found out, you know, it was quite, quite interesting when we dive together, you know, we learn a lot of things together. You see, it's uh, where we learn from the student and the student learns from us. So that's the kind of relationship that I have exactly. with most of my students. So I basically felt that it was really, really great and a good student, you know, it was okay. not that stressful in comparison to a lot of situations that we face. Right. So, Mihin, when uh, talking about diving again, now you're still an A-level student, you're doing your exams next yes. year also. So, how do you find your time? How do you balance your time with your studies, with your sports? You probably might be doing sports in school and then you need to come practice your diving also. So, how do you manage that? Well, I mostly do diving during the holidays, but, um, you know, if, if there's a small opening, if there's like, if the sea is good, if the weather is good, I'll try and make some time for it, but of course I have to focus on my studies as well. Yeah. So it's more of like I, uh, it's more of like let the ocean decide when I can get you know <laughs> go scuba diving. Was it ever scary for you, like when you first went in the ocean? Well, I was actually scared when I got in the pool, but when I got into the ocean, I didn't really feel much because once I got in, you know, I felt like I was in space. You know, there was nothing around me except water. The only thing I could hear was my breathing and, you know, the, the bubbles and everything. So, it was, I was really calm and relaxed. So, I didn't really feel the need to be scared. Oh, really? Because usually in a pool, it's a stagnant water and mm. it's very shallow. But in the ocean, you have the waves. It's very, there's, it's deep and, yeah. you know, there are creatures in there. So, nothing bothered you at that time, was it? No, not really. So you had an adventurous mind. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, sir, in your career now, you said you love teaching. How can you describe the young people, their engagement in something like diving here in Sri Lanka? The interest is now spreading out, you know, but it's very slow. Because, you know, when you go, when you go and speak with the student, sometimes it takes time to, you know, like, communicate with them and convince them that, okay, why not try it, right? So I usually hang out at coffee shops and that's where I meet young people and then I say, why don't you come and try a bit of diving? And then I talk to them about certain experiences that I've had. So sometimes little personal experiences draw the student in. But there is an interest now, we have a diving team at St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. Also, we have an interest with overseas children's school, right? But what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if we could join all the other schools, right? And create an interest, develop that interest, because the young people want to learn. And I find that, you know, like, the more they learn, the more they want to find out and the more they want to investigate, which I like that in a young mind. So uh, I feel that, you know, this is the way it should go, you know, like yeah. put it before them. And what I do is I market, what I do with uh, my teaching or my sort of enticing skills is to market the shipwrecks. <laughs> we have, yeah. especially in Colombo, we have quite a lot of shipwrecks. And I talk about certain stories, experiences that I've had on shipwrecks. And this thing that draws the kids there. It's a little bit of adventure where you go swimming around the shipwrecks, you investigate little nooks and crannies in the shipwreck, and the children like that. I mean, I think you used that tactic on me also and you just showed me the shipwreck over there and you're like, you have to come see it. Right at that moment, I was like, yes, I should. I should definitely try it with y'all as well. But I'm also an ocean girl, so I'm down any time to like explore the ocean. Now, so you said like, you know, sometimes the popularity is not great for diving and you have to put a little bit of effort into marketing and per se. So why do you think people are not very interested in uh, diving at the moment? Is it because of the fear they have towards the ocean? Mm, well, most probably actually. Yeah. Yeah. In Sri Lanka, what happens is that we have this fear factor 
A lot of the kids have been told, uh, don't go into the water, you will die. Which is not the correct thing to say. True, you need to respect the water, right? But you shouldn't have fear of it, right? So one thing that we find out is that, you know, you first teach them to swim. Then encourage them, you know, in little, little things, you know, to be confident in the water. Maybe, you know, teach them how to use a fin. The fin. Fins. Then a mask. Then a snorkel. And then little by little, step by step, say, would you like to try to see this reef? There are different, different types of fish, you know. And use a little bit of, you know, like, you know what I mean, right? A little bit of, say, if you see this, you will want to see something else. If you see that one, you want to see something else, right? right. That's how I work with the students. And they, they are quite comfortable that way. But it's a progressive strategy that you speak with the Definitely. students. And you encourage the students. Then you draw the students in and make them confident, poss possibly on the reef edge. Yeah, fear is something yeah. that you can't get over that fast, yeah. so gradually you have to get into it. Yeah. Now, there are more stories that I want to ask from you all about your experience underwater and about the animals that you have experienced down there also. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Mihin Jai Kodi, an advanced over water diver and also Jehan Piris who is the master scuba diving trainer. So I think in the first segment you all described about your experience in scuba diving and what interests you all and how you all got into this field and we spoke about the youth engagement also. So Mihin, the most important thing is today you are launching your book uh, which you have based on your experience and uh, tell us a little bit about it and why you decided to launch this book. Well, um, the book is mainly about my diving experiences. Uh, you know, it has a small educational touch to it. Obviously, you know, we, I tell um, the, the reader how, um, you know, all the scuba gear works, you know, stuff like that, the basics. And, uh, you know, I, it's mostly about my diving experiences and uh, th I think the reason I wrote it is mainly because I had a mentor. Uh, his name is uh, Howard Martinstein. I'm not sure if you've heard, but uh, he's an expert on uh, marine wildlife. So uh, I went to one of his book uh, launches back in um, 2016, I believe. Yeah, 2016. And, uh, you know, he... Uh, Mr. Howard was really very inspiring with his words because, you know, he talked to me and uh, he talked to me because I was so interested in his book uh, and he, he talked to me, he was like, you have to write a book, you have to, once you grow up, you're going to give something to the world that the world doesn't know. So, I thought, so, once, um, I think, around the age of 13, my mom, like, until then I didn't really know what I should write my book about. So up till uh, uh, the age of 13, my mom was like, hey, why don't you write the book about scuba diving? And I was like, that sounds like a really good idea. And I kind of just went with the flow. So uh, I had already, I was already a scuba diver. I already had quite a few dives under my belt. I, have ex I had a lot of experiences to share. So I thought I'd write them in this book and then give it to the people. Oh, great. That's, it's nice to always hear about somebody's experience before you do something and yeah. you know be cautious about it even if you're interested to do about it. So uh, Mr. Jehan, what can you talk about Mihin's interest in uh, scuba diving? His interest is uh, quite, quite, uh, what I like about his interest is like I've been also harping on, I love my students so write about their experiences. And one thing that I've been sort of touching a lot on is logging your dives. 
So each dive that you do, you log the details, what you see, how you felt, what type of equipment that you use, right? And I'm sure he would have heard also that I love children or I love my students to write what they see, what they have experienced, and also their uh, details that they compile together or put together on paper or on data and things like that will also bring out a lot of interesting things. And uh, when the student brings out these things, right, we can find out a lot from them, right? Okay, we have to look at things outside the box now. That's right. And uh, okay, we have limited resources. Okay, we can have the internet and all that, but nothing can beat personal experience and then say if they look at something and they want to find out more about that I encourage I said okay find out more about that write down everything bring your research out and then write about it yeah, and speak about it yeah people would be really interested in finding out because it's a world that nobody can have access to at the moment unless you are a professional diver so when talking about diving again, it's something you can say a little bit risky because of the situation of the sea, because of the creatures underneath there. So have, have you all considered that risk <coughs> into yourselves and do you just go ahead? Like, is it dangerous? Well, every time we dive, we already do know the risk, you know, everything that can happen. But the thing is, also by knowing that risk, we also know all the precautions that we should take. You know, we know all the solutions to them. And we have, you know, we have this set of uh, rules that we follow, which we know that if we uh, go behind, in most, uh, most probably we'll be totally fine. <laughs> okay. Um, so what can you talk about a few of your experience? What was the most memorable experience for you? And what were some of the dangerous encounters that you have come across? Well, the most memorable, memorable experience that I had was when I was teaching a student. Uh, this student came to me because he saw us on the beach. And uh, he had sort of been watching for about two, three days. He had been watching us. And uh, he came up to me and spoke to me in Sinhalese. I want to learn to dive. But then uh, I said, yeah, so let's start. He said, only thing is I can't swim. Right? So uh, this guy had a long chat with me and arranged a program that I teach him swimming first. And that took me maybe about three weeks. And from a person who was not being able to swim, within three weeks, he was swimming 1K, one kilometer, right? And then happily calls me and says, uh, Jehan, I can swim, shall we start diving? So when I took him to the diving, when I took him to the pool, right? Uh, his eyes like sort of opened wide and he said, we are going to, jump in the pool, right, with a diving tank, uh -huh. right, and how does it go? So I said, don't <laughs> worry, we'll get in. Then when I took him inside, right, he sort of really enjoyed it, right, and he basically did all the skills, that's because he's gone on to YouTube and he has been watching YouTube doing all the skills. Then when I took him out to sea, they are too wide-eyed, right? He was frightened, scared. But uh, we took him to the wreck. And uh, we had sort of done our briefing, dive briefing, and got our equipment on. And when we were in the water, we see a whale shark swims oh by us. Oh my goodness. And it's on the first dive. 
that's the most memorable experience that I have had. Where you get the whale shark swimming around, and he was there for a good 45 minutes right throughout his first and second dive. Person who has never dived before, first and second dive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that's one of the best experiences that I have had. And uh, this is in my teaching career. And uh, with regard to dangers, there have been no dangers because what we do is we stick to a protocol. So a professional association of diving instructors has a set protocol. And when you are diving, you have to stick within the standards. So when I teach a student, what I do is I get the student to understand theory first. And I have discussions with the student about the theory so that they fully understand. Then after that, we get the student in the pool. And I spend a good time, maybe about two hours, three hours, sometimes four to five hours underwater teaching the student basic survival skills. Once the skills are completed only, then I see, okay, we are ready to go into the sea. So on the first two dives, it's not more than, this is for the open water course, right? For the first two dives, it's not more than 10 meters. So it's around 10 meters, we do all the skills and we practice certain survival activities, right? And then on the next two dives, it's just basically you go down to about 14, 15 meters, the deepest being 18 meters. So that is the first stage. And the second stage is the advanced open water course where you are introduced to deeper dives. But maximum is 30 meters. Okay. Right? If you go anything beyond 30 meters, you have to be certified, you have to be qualified, and you have to be properly trained. Right. So, Mihin, uh, you're in this stage at the moment, no? Advanced open yes. water. Right. So. Your sir just told me that he got an encounter with a shark while training a student. Have you had any encounters like that? Well, I have had quite a bit of marine life experiences, uh, but it wasn't as dangerous, it was more fascinating for me. Uh, I think my most memorable experiences, um, I think uh, in Trincomalee, yes, Trincomalee, I was uh, swimming along the seabed and there was a small patch of sand which was like disturbed you know there was uh, sand floating around and, and I went to check it out and there was a few rocks and then like hiding in between the rocks were, there was a mantis shrimp and uh, mantis shrimp are known for their you know their really hard punch so because that's what they use to disable uh, their prey or predator uh, so what happened was it kind of lashed out at me and it was it was like lightning fast I really couldn't see it at all but luckily for me the punch didn't really connect so I came back unscathed so. Wow okay so <laughs> sir you would have experienced even more scarier stuff than this but just for my knowledge like what do you do at that point now you said that there was a shark circling around the shipwreck and so do you all just wait there until it goes away yeah yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes we, well, on that particular dive, the dive was forgotten for a while, maybe for a good 45 minutes, and we were just watching the shark, you know, a whale shark, docile, guy was just swimming around the wreck and enjoying himself, you know, and then what we did was we did the briefing and went underwater. Whilst we were underwater, also you could see him swimming around. So it doesn't, while you're in the water, there are sharks swimming around you and they don't attack? No, no they're, they're, they're actually quite docile creatures. Uh, sharks, <laughs> so the whale shark in particular, even though it's quite big, it doesn't really have any intent to harm um, humans, really. So you have been swimming with sharks too? Yeah, I, I've uh, swam with sharks in uh, Unawatuna and uh, I think I've seen a few in Trinko as well. They're actually quite uh, friendly creatures. As long as, as long as you don't um, interrupt what they're doing or get in their territory or annoy them too much, they just swim around and just let you be in the background, really. Wow, okay. Now that is a thought which I can't fathom <laughs> at the moment, like swimming with sharks. Because uh, 
anyway you can't determine creatures and you know something that people are really concerned about is safety at the moment and the ocean is also something that you need to be really concerned about with uh, the weather and with the severity of the waves so do you all also determine the severity of the waves in the ocean or is there some source that you all get information from regarding the weather well for me personally i get information okay you get from the internet also you follow wind guru right and you follow certain rips and you know the wavelengths of the currents and things like that but the best information that you can get is from the fishermen because uh, fishermen they go out early evening and they spend all night right throughout and some of them they come and then they go back again right and they tell you know currents are going northwards the uh, winds are building up you know and say when the winds build up then it's not safe so what we do is we usually do the dives and come back before 11:30 12 sometimes 1 o'clock after 1 o'clock then the winds are strong you know it's stronger than right now okay so we need to continue this discussion but uh, before that we have to go into a short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching gen next rising Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we've reached our last segment also, and we've been in discussion with uh, Mihin Jayakodi and Mr. Jahan Piris regarding scuba diving, and uh, we're going to continue on that discussion now. Uh, something I feel that scuba diving can expose you all to is being involved with the environment, protecting nature. So, do you all engage in this sort of activities? Yes, as uh, I think I as I spoke before, um, it's kind of like an unwritten rule of diving. You know, as you know, because as a diver, I think it's like one of our roles to protect the ocean and our surroundings. Because there's not that many people who actually get in the ocean. You know, go down to the depths and you know, like uh, you know, explore and stuff. So there's only a very limited number of people. Uh, esp um, uh, not especially, but like. Mostly in Colombo, there's not that not that much popularity. Uh, the issue is there's a lot of rubbish here in Colombo as well. You know, people are dumping a lot of rubbish. You know, plastic bottles, bags, and what will happen is it'll just like uh, most of it will float up and wash wash up to the um, beach. But there's also some that gets stuck on coral, and uh, maybe even uh, gets stuck on fish and causes those organisms to die off, and possibly maybe even. Uh, if there's enough maybe cause a chain reaction and probably collapse the ecosystem so it's uh, as a scuba diver i think it's our job to go around you know if you see anything any rubbish you know pick it up you know take it with you hold it throughout the dive uh, bring it back and then put it in a bin on dry land yeah that's right uh, in recent times what was the latest activity that you all have engaged with in terms of protecting the environment have you all taken part in helping you know with the nerdal disaster that happened recently um, that was the shipwreck yes yes, yes. Uh, so i wasn't particularly involved in that i don't really have much details about that but uh, i did do a small conservation project in uh, unawatuna it was called project awareness um so i helped with that and uh, there was uh, there was also a few um projects where we uh took large metal um cones uh, like cylindric cones with holes in the top and we placed them in certain parts of unawatuna where we would let the coral grow and then possibly create uh, help create another reef or yeah possibly a better ecosystem all right So, sir, uh, Mr. Jahan, do you encourage young people to engage in these sort of activities as well? Yeah, on most of my courses that I do, I emphasize a lot on marine protection 
And uh, what I would focus a lot on when you do the advanced open water course dive or the dives that you are going to do would be projector wear. Projector wear is, you know, it's more on research on protecting wildlife and being aware of the environment and how you take care of the environment. Also, we are quite active here with regard to the place where I work, Island Scuba. Uh, we are in touch with pearl protectors. You may have heard of pearl, pearl protectors. And very often we get on projects with them, right? Out of Colombo, where we clean up the reef, we get together, collect plastic, yeah. and forward the plastic to a recycler where they utilize it for something or the other. But very often we do a lot of stuff like that, you know, All cleaning right. up the reefs and protecting the reefs. As an instructor, sir, now when you're teaching your students, what are the common mistakes that the divers tend to do and what should they be aware of? Mistakes? Yes. Not much of a mistake, but usually the crucial, uh, the crucial mistake that I've noticed that students have or do is uh, panic when you're clearing your mask. So that I spend a lot of time in the pool. With. And then once you get them, you get the students underwater in the sea, right? You give the student a good briefing and sort of be extra, extra careful on that particular skill. But other than that, everything else is usually smooth sailing. I mean, have you had uh, any bad experiences? Bad experiences? Well... Or something you feel that you need to give advices for the future divers who want to get enrolled? Well, not that I have any advice for future divers. Diving is quite a, you know, it's quite an... Uh, it's, it's kind of like a thing, um, how do you say? It's kind of like a hobby for everyone, really. You know, uh, there's not really that, uh, that much requirements, but you do, you know, you have to have the commitment to the role, you know, you have to follow the rules. Uh, you know, you should, never, you should never deviate from what your training has told you to do. Uh, for me, um, I do have an experience, but it's, uh, I wouldn't say dangerous, but um, it was a bit of a bit nerve-wracking at that at the moment at like at that moment in time. But when I look back on it, I think it was a very um, how do you say it? Uh, Something you would remember. Well, it helped me improve myself and my uh, passion for diving. So what had happened is, uh, so we were diving at the wreck uh, uh, back there. It's called Thermopylae Sierra. Uh, it's, I believe, 165 meters long. Uh, 155 meters 155. length. And uh, it's a huge ship, huge ship. And um, I was diving there with uh, Jehan uh, doing my rescue course. And um, what had happened is we did two dives. Uh, on the second dive, we decided to go inside the ship cabins. And the issue there was that uh, there was a lot of swells, so ocean swells, you know, like, you know, the ocean moving back and forth. Uh, so inside the cabin, you know, I could feel myself getting pushed back and forth. And to be honest, my buoyancy wasn't really on point. And uh, so the ship is actually engulfed in these creatures called barnacles. And barnacles are like a, how do you say, it? it's kind of like a mollusk type species and they have a calcite shell around them. And on the edge of the calcite shell, you have these razor sharp points sticking out. And even though they don't look harmless, they can actually cut pretty deep to the bone. So what had happened is, while I was swimming inside the cabin, you know, my buoyancy was off point and then suddenly a big swell came and then I got knocked over. Uh, I, I got scraped, I got cuts here and um, one barnacle went so deep it went through my fin and into my foot as well. So, oh, yeah. that would have hurt. Yeah, Were it you? was, uh, it was moderate. Moderate. <laughs> moderate. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have been able to dive afterwards, no? Uh, no, like it was actually, uh, it wasn't that bad, it was uh, mostly just a cut. There was, there was bleeding of course, but um, 
it was recoverable. It wasn't really that as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's like the little things even you have to be really careful of. All right, Mr. Jahan, uh, you said that you want to encourage people to join diving and get that experience here in Sri Lanka. Why do you think that people should get engaged in this uh, sort of sport? Explain it a little bit more. Uh, why do you think like people should be engaged in this and why are you encouraging people to do this activity? Well, I would encourage it more at school levels. Perhaps if they could have it if they could have it as a subject for school levels because Sri Lanka is a nation that's surrounded by water. Yeah. Right? And we have so much to investigate still. And there's still so much to uh, offer. Right? We need to tap the resources. We need to tap, you know, what we have in the ocean. We need to understand that, you know, the ocean is very friendly, even though people have the wrong concept about it, right? And uh, we need to have our Sri Lankans more and more involved, especially at school level, because at the senior levels, it will be very difficult to convince. But during school and things like that, I feel once the kids get roped in, right, our popularity will develop faster. We should have more dive centers, I would say with proper professional uh, facilities and uh, get more and more people roped in. It's good, you know, it's good for us to get involved. That's it's right. It's not enough, in it's my opinion. It's not enough, yeah. That's true though, because uh, I feel that this is such a good tourist attraction as well, because we are named as the Pearl of the Indian Ocean and we are known for our tropical, uh, the characteristics of tropicality and also our oceans are really beautiful. And uh, I think, sir, you have had your experience in uh, UK as well, in yeah. diving. So what, what is the difference you see here, diving in Sri Lanka and dri diving abroad? Sri Lankan waters, of course, 28 degrees Celsius, 29, sometimes 30. Just a pair of shorts and t-shirt. Whilst in the UK, you have to have a wetsuit, which is very thick, maybe around 7 millimeter. And sometimes if it's really cold, you need to use a dry suit. So you need specialized training for that. Uh, in Norway, it's similar. Norway, the water is a bit colder, right? But other than that, you know, when you're in Europe, it's uh, pretty cold. Great, okay. Well, uh, we are reaching the end of our program as well. Mihin, I want to end with you by telling a little bit more about your book, how people can access your book and from where they can purchase it or read your work. Well, I'll be posting on social media about the book, you know, uh, people can contact me through social media, there'll be an Instagram, there'll be Facebook, uh, and they can uh, contact me through that and then try to get a copy of the book, maybe even a signed copy. Um, and also, uh, I, have, I'm plan I have a YouTube channel that's slowly growing, I'm going to be posting footage and stuff on that, you know, about my diving journeys, my adventures, because I think that, as Jahan said before, there's a recurring fear for the ocean that Sri Lankan people have, and maybe not even just Sri Lankan people, maybe other people, you know, different countries. It's really for everyone. So, um, what I think is, by posting that footage, I'll be able to, like, you know, maybe um, educate people on how, like, the ocean really is, it's, you know, how it's not really that bad, you know, it's, um, we should think of the ocean as our friend, not our enemy, you know, because what most people do in a harrowing situation is uh, they react the wrong way, so I think uh, to let people know that, um, how do you say, we think we should be more relaxed when it comes to the ocean, we shouldn't be uh, too um, fearful of it, you know, we should you know, when, when the water touches our feet and our, you know, our toes, I think we should just like embrace it, you know, dive right in. So. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us and I wish you all the very best also. And sir, keep doing what you're doing, encourage people to go diving and hopefully if I get the chance, I will come join you as well. And again, thank you so much for taking the time. 
and that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We'll be back again next week with another topic or issue relating to the youth. And just in case you can watch us on air, you can always rewatch on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.